Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.2. In this episode we begin with something I proposed in the previous episode which is a passenger transport vessel from between Kerbin orbit and Moon or Minmus orbit and back of course. And uh, for that we have this. This is primarily Lackluster Labs parts which I, I just love in general. And in this case we have this uh, hog cockpit up front which carries uh, two crew, uh, 1.82 tons, very reasonable, and it has a reaction wheel of 10 torque and all the logistics stuff too, interestingly enough, and an internal antenna rating, but I put a backup antenna on top as well anyway, just in case. Uh, well, actually, I think the internal antenna has probably not got the kind of range we want, but then again, of course, we've got it crewed. Uh, these are RCS banks, five-way, and we've got them all over the place. We've got the mob propellant in the tail and then this is the fuel, uh, well this here and this is the fuel tank so about uh, 700 units of liquid fuel altogether. This is a crew cabin and it can carry a total of, oops, wrong tab, uh, a six so in total we can carry eight peoples or kerbals and we can change the styling if we like we can uh, pick various sorts of looks, uh, though in some cases that would bury the solar panels, so that's not a good thing. Let's make sure we just stick to that for now. Alright, the engines that we're going to use are these, which you saw on the previous Lackluster Lab thing that I made, and that one was direct to the lunar surface, but that isn't quite efficient. Anyway, it's got uh, two 80 kilonewton ones of these, uh, 320 vacuum ISP is all. As soon as we can, we should replace them with nuclear engines, but we don't have those yet. So that's why I haven't put those on. Obviously, those would be a natural choice. And at that point, we can uh, change our tank setup to just liquid fuel here. So that's very convenient. I couldn't uh, really scale up this because the cockpit doesn't scale. So that's the problem there. And the sort of normal mission of this would be start in Kerbin orbit, transfer to the moon, get into lunar orbit, uh, perhaps stop with a station, maybe not. It's got the mon propellant, right, and the RCS thrusters, and then make its way back to Kerbin, and then aero brake, which is why we have these air brakes. And I haven't, I don't remember trying these before, but it's got four of them all together, and that's because it's going to try an air brake. I don't know if they're any better than the normal stock ones, these air brakes, but they look cool, so I went with them. We'll see how they do. So we've got those air brakes, and hopefully those can slow us down around uh, Kerbin orbit, and we'll have to be careful about that because we don't want this crashing into the ground. It's got no remote controller, so there has to be a pilot in there, and uh, the heat tolerance of all these parts is 2,000, um, 2000 Kelvin I suppose so yeah we should be good as far as heat tolerance on the air brake hopefully and in any case we're not coming in straight to land we just need to slow down a bit so now we have to talk about how to launch this alright so here we are and the launch looks like this of course I've auto strutted the stuff so that it's all strutted to the heaviest part We've got this sort of docking port arrangement here, and that's not on the bottom after all. And then we have a controller for this because we're going to be bringing this stage back down all the way from orbit. It's just got a single mainsail at the bottom. And, oh dear. Um, I forgot we have issues with the procedural SRBs. You can see the cone has ended up there. Hmm, that doesn't seem like a good thing, huh? Let's just use some stock SRBs. The reason I had sized these and have four of them like this is because this was the um, largest I could make it so that I could recover these with 6 meters per second and a 100% recovery rate. But, well, if they're going to mess around like this, I'll just replace them with stock ones. And the reason we need to do that is because this otherwise doesn't have enough delta V, uh, not delta V, uh, thrust to weight ratio, even with the mainsail. Uh, to be a single station orbit sort of thing and when it comes to refueling our craft because we have to think about that too once it goes to the moon and comes back and needs to be refueled well this stage will do that as well 
and that's why it's got the RCS tanks, which you'll uh, use to refuel the RCS on here. But right now it doesn't have any fuel in because we don't need it. And it also has a docking port for that reason, even though we could have just attached that directly to um, some sort of decoupler. And so, yep, that's the plan. It's got antennae as well, these dwarf satellite dishes. But let's get some better SRBs that won't mess with us. I've got to figure out what's up with the procedural SRBs and what, but of course, uh, I should mention that procedural parts hasn't fully been updated for 1.2, so that's probably what's going on. But, oh, not those. I thought I was getting smaller ones. So, yeah, it's probably because it hasn't been fully updated to 1.2. That's why we've got some issues with it. Yep. Okay, these look uh, about the right size. About the same size as the procedural ones. So, in theory, that should be all right. Let's see. Uh, 6.9. I don't want to put additional parachutes. That's why I wanted to size them like that. So it's a little bit sad. Also, I, I need them to last longer. I don't need them to have so much up front. So let's thrust limit a bit. And they don't have as much thrust as the procedural SRBs too. The procedural SRBs somehow were more efficient. Actually, I think they are more efficient. Uh, I think in terms of ISP, the procedural SRBs are better. Uh, this has 210 tops. And if we take a look at the procedural SRBs, um, well, right now the procedural SRB is just messed up. <laughs> um, uh, that that ISP does not make any good sense at all. So we'll leave that be for now. All right, we'll go with this, even though it's not quite as energetic as I wanted it to be. And we should have enough fuel to come back down, but we'll have to take a look at that. I think we're only gonna send one Kerbal up with this on this test. But we do need to send a Kerbal, otherwise that portion... Well, I could have added a remote controller, but that would have been extra mass. And we do want it to be Kerbaled. So, yeah. Not Valentina Bob, we'll have somebody new do it. Sigmor, Sigmor Kerman, will be our test pilot for this mission. After this, we need to uh, get on with the scan right. 23 days there. Now, Sigmor is going to be able to stay in here for... 46, well, more than 46 days, there's only one crew, it's reading two crew there. I hope he'll be alright. Habitation, 30 days. I don't know if that goes up if there's only one person. It's not really showing me. Um, maybe we should time warp a little bit before launching this. Otherwise, otherwise 23 days and then we'll have to deal with Sigmor right away if we assume 30 days. All right, here we are, and right now the scan ride has eight more days to go. So we still have time on that. We really need to pick up some more contracts, but this is not a mission that's going to fulfill any contracts, so we might as well get it done. All right, everything looks to be in order. Uh, so here we go. Launch. Whoa, um, everything's not in order. Whoa. Initial wobbliness. It's like it got a kick from one of the clamps or something. Let's go up for a little while. Okay, those are off. Please don't crash into each other. It looks like they're alright. Um, you know, the TWR was less than advertised. And I thought the boosters... They did not get my thrust limiting of them. I think it might not have gotten my thrust limiting of them. Anyway, we need to get on with this now. On the bright side, uh, Sigmor's little craft has 2,000 meters per second of delta V. So, in a pinch, there's a point where it could make orbit. I just heard something explode. Dang it. I think they're exploding. Ah, uh, it doesn't look like stage recovery recovered the boosters. May I need to put a controller on them or something? Shouldn't need to, but that appears to be the situation. Stage recovery definitely did not take care of them. 
nice flame from the mainsail engine, and Sigmor seems to be all right with everything. I got some suggestions for the electrical situation at the moon base, and we'll talk about that at the VAB after we handle this. I think we can release the ferry now. Okay, good. Off it goes. This is a lot tighter on the Delta V than I thought it would be. Let's go to 90 kilometers. Or close to it. Nah, maybe we should push it. Uh, let's go to 100. But we don't have any parachutes on the stage, so we're going to have to do a propulsive landing, if that's possible. Well, that's a good enough orbit. Not exactly the margins I wanted. I don't suppose there's anything locked in here, is there? Nope. Okay, well, and there wasn't any RCS there. Okay, decouple node. RCS on and forward. Very good, RCS working fine. And it looks like it's operational. Let's see what it says about his habitability right now. Oh, good, good. 107 days of supplies, 19 days of electric charge. Electric charge, it says expired for the base. But I'm sure if I go to it, it'll have electric charge. That um, habitation, 119 days. Actually, uh, Sigmor is practically better off than Jim and Bill, weirdly enough. Well, all right. In orbit, no problems. Let's see if we can bring this stage back down. And even without the payload, we only have 227 meters per second. So we're probably going to crash. This is not going to be a nice, safe return here. Well, we're definitely not going to go back up. Uh, 82 by 32. Interesting sunrise. This looks like It looks like it's eclipsed by something. I don't quite understand that. Don't tell me the moon happened to be in front of the sun right at sunrise. I wouldn't be following it that closely. That's some weird glitch, I imagine. That's no moon. <laughs> oh, that's, that's a thought. I mean, that's ominous, all right. There's a little crap. There's a little something there. Right there. Oh, here we go. We really want to get to firm soil here. Well, I don't know, actually, with uh, so little fuel. There's probably no way I'm going to be doing a particularly good suicide burn. It's just doomed, but we can adjust. Might need to slap on better boosters, just in general. So, we are going through the plasma blackout. It looks like we will hit land. Uh, as long as we don't hit the mountains, I think I can be happy. But of course, even if we did hit the mountains, it's not like I'm in a position to really recover this. Looks like having the air brakes out the whole time is not a problem. Oh, now we have connection because we are through the plasma. We've got a suicide burn countdown. Do I trust it? Don't know. Okay, how about just SAS? Get the landing gear down. Not much of a chance, but you know, make a good show of it. I'm taking the suicide burn countdown seriously. I'm assuming that that's like gospel.
Oh shoot, a little bit early. Oh! Oh. Well, uh, you know, uh, given the amount of fuel we had left, it could have been worse. I guess we'll recover what we can recover. Uh, we'll have to pick up that tank some other time. Okay, well, we returned 10 science and 26,000 funds. Uh, not huge, but at least it's something. All right. Um, let's take a quick look at what contracts are available. Um, gather scientific data from Kerbin, I don't care so much about. Magnetic field environment of the moon doesn't pay very much. Uh, orbital survey of the moon is eh, still a little bit unimpressive. Heat shield 10 meters in flight over a Kerbin sounds dangerous. At those speeds, well, okay, so that's just coming back down. I don't know. That That's also not very lucrative, though we could use that heat shield for some time. Um, we have to recover this part from orbit of the sun. That, that pays pretty well. Interesting. 0.6 ton part. We need the claw or something, I guess. We could have a satellite in orbit of the sun. That's a pretty weird orbit though. That's very eccentric. And the inclination is retrograde. No, I don't think so. Stations? Well, we could do with a Kerbin orbit station. It wants five Kerbals. It's basically the same as our moon orbit station. We might as well launch the same thing uh, without, uh, you know, short of stage or something to transfer it to the moon. And then it wants another orbital station around the moon with a viewing cupola, five Kerbals. We could just add a module to our existing station and that this could be our module. I think we'll take the two station building ones, but I need better station building contracts. I've, I've mentioned that before, but I just need to look for the contract configuration packs for 1.2. Okay, uh, those give us quite a long time to deal with them, 7 years and 13 years. But the other contracts we have are all scanning Minmus, so let's get the scan right to where it's going. Oh, I mentioned that I wanted to uh, check out something first. So there's the matter of power distribution on our moon or colony, and there's this Ranger Scout 200 power pack that, as I understand it, is important for such things and the interesting thing about this is is how much it costs because the ranger scout power pack is impressive it's basically a rtg and it'll distribute plenty of electric charge uh, it requires the plutonium I, it's interesting it says requirement uh, plutonium 20 but it consumes 0.02 per day does that mean that once it's short of Plutonium, I mean, once it's at 19.8 or 19.98, it won't run? I'm not sure. Because uh, if you say it requires 20 plutonium. But yeah, it's got the plutonium, so it costs a lot. You can see 80,000 funds is the cost of it. Uh, so that's pretty hefty, but then again, it supplies 50 electric charge per second, and in theory, We'll distribute it to any power coupler within 500 meters, not 150, but 500. And like this Duna colonization module, it does have this power coupler. See, right here. Uh, requires landed or splashed down. Well, it's landed. So, yeah, this could take care of things. But it's expensive, and we'll have to make sure it's, it's also taken care of in its turn. And then uh, we could resupply it, I suppose. There are uh, there's these logistics things, nuclear waste container for depleted fuel, and then nuclear fuel. But that's enriched uranium. This is plutonium. Hmm. Curious about how I transport. I guess we'll just send a new one of these Scout power packs and says sending plutonium. I'll have to take a look at what the uranium is for. Nuclear power plants, folks, basically. So, um, no, this is a power distribution unit. Let's see. This one uses enriched uranium. And the good thing, it says, doesn't say that it requires 10 units of it ahead of time. So that's 
more promising. Oh, and it has a 2,000 meter range. Two kilometers, wow. That's impressive. Long range power distribution. Small nuclear power plant. Radiators not included. Well, I don't know if we need radiators. Maybe we should have them. Crew capacity 2. Okay, so that's only 62,000. So here's the rub. I mean, yeah, that's heavier. It's got crew capacity. It's got the long, long range power distribution. And it costs less than this. And on top of that, we can replenish it. It's only got 10 enriched uranium now. Now that's that's an interesting point though. This has 20 units and that costs 80,000. And uses 0.02 per day. So basically, 10, it's got 1,000 days worth. How much does this have? Well, it has 10 units and it uses 0.06 per day. That means in 16 days it uses one. So that's only 160 days worth of enriched uranium. So this gives us, so that gives us better range. This one gives us better duration. But we can replenish that one. We can uh, send all these little enriched uranium packs over there and hopefully it can grab them. Much to think about. Ooh, this nuclear fuel container um, okay, but on its own it doesn't cost that much. Well, no, actually the container itself costs 10,000. But then you, you fill up your, with your enriched uranium and it, it, uh, it gets pricey. Okay, well uranium is definitely not cheaper than plutonium around here. So, lots to think about. But anyway, let's leave that for later and turn instead to our scan right. Okay, here we are with the scan right and it's a nice view. Earth, uh, not Earth, Kerbin's there. The moon and there's Minmus. We are in Minmus SOI. Now, if I was particularly clever, we should, instead of using the uranium from home, we could mine it at various locations. And if we uh, take a look at the situation on the moon, maybe, we've done some scanning there. Now, I haven't done the, what you got, the ScanSat version of scanning. I've done the this version of scanning and I guess what we're looking for is uraninite hopefully and looking at our base there is some to be had there well not much uh, cut off 40 percent and it's gone uh, it looks like there's more in other locations but it's not totally absent so that's a start uh, cut off 30 percent it seems to be higher than that at least so there's a chance we should, after I take care of the scan right around Minmus, maybe Minmus is a better place to get from. Maybe we'll set up our base on Minmus where uraninite is abundant, but we'll see if it overlaps with other things. As, uh, you know, when we established our base here, and the reason we picked that location is because it had many possibilities. Um, if we increase the concentration, not so much hydrates, Actually, uh, okay, carbonite, if we, let's set the cutoff at 60%. Carbonite's there, or sort of um, 50%, 60, you can see a tint. Not so much rare metals or that sort of thing. Water, well, we could get it from the pole, so at least it's close by. The, this mon monazite, I have no idea what it's about, but we can get there is some concentration of minerals. Um, yeah, so that's the idea. We'll, in fact, it would be a good thing to establish our base on Minmus precisely where we can get those things that we can't get on the moon. So, alumina we can get on the moon. Dirt, um, apparently not so much at our base. So maybe we'll look for, does Minmus have dirt? We would assume so, but maybe not, who knows. Exotic minerals, gypsum, hydrates we don't need. So dirt, exotic minerals, gypsum, metal ore, rare metals, silicates, substrate, uraninite, and water. So those are things we're looking for on Minmus. Well, let's get to our node to make orbit. It'll be a high polar orbit for scanning purposes. Um, we could go more polar than this. We're only at 77 degrees. 
We could do a better job than that. There we go. 88 degrees makes me a little bit happier. Okay, we can now proceed. All right, 185 by 170 so far. We've got 116 meters per second left. Um, scan side altitude is suboptimal for the multi-spectral sensor. Let's see what the other ones say. Scan set altitude is ideal for altimetry, but we do want our multi-spectral sensor happy. Let's see if we can do an orbital survey. It's, it's happening. We'll use the same cutoff alumina, which I, I don't know what I'm going to use for, but uh, suggest something around here would be nice. There's little patches elsewhere, but maybe it is a good place to get metal stuff. So let's just focus in on here. Dirt, not so much, but maybe if we sort of build it around here, we can get the overlapping region between this patch and that one. Exotic Minerals is good, same patch as Illumina. Gypsum is same patch as Dirt. Hydrates, well, good all around. Uh, there's Carbonite up here. Metallic Ore, all over the place really. If we pick a place here, it should be okay. Uh, metal ore seems to be on the southern portion of this. Minerals, the northern portion. Monsonite all over the place. Ore in the southern portion here. Rare metals there. We should probably shade to the southern side. There seems to be some good stuff. Silicates. But what about uraninite? Uraninite down here. Okay. So if I could put a little marker, but I'm sure, I mean, I'll, I'll real, uh, we can always use the Illumina to figure out where I want it to be. So, yeah, that's good. And water's there too. Nice of them to sort of overlap. I, I don't know if that's reasonable or not, but obviously a lot of these patches are overlapping. I'm not sure why. Okay, but uh, we have done that, and perhaps we can do some science here. Uh, let's see, analyze data. Well, it might take some time. How about, okay, scan Minmus for resources. We've got that, 75%. Um, biome scan of Minmus. Uh, that one's doing a multi-spectral scan. Suboptimal, though. We, we might need to boost our orbit. And low-resolution altimetry scan. That's, that's this one. That one's ideal. Let's see. But we we haven't gotten any yet, I think. Wish these actually said how much I've already done. There's an anomaly there. I wonder if we just time warp for a little bit of time. Okay, yes. Low resu okay, uh low resolution altimetry scan is done, but not the biome scan. Okay. Um, let's see, let's try and boost our orbit a little bit higher, but we don't have a whole lot of fuel, so we better be careful. Let's try 250. Okay, 250 is ideal. So we'll go to apoapsis and boost the periapsis end to that too. I don't know, I think the multi-spectral sensor is the one that would scan for biomes, but... Not a hundred percent sure. Yeah, well, this one is scanning for biomes. It says biome right there, so that'll handle it. Okay, that should do it. Let's verify with the big map. And what I really want is a biome map. Map type biome. It's already scanned some biomes, I guess just not very well, and certainly not 75%. Let's time up a little bit. Didn't seem to take too long. Oh, it seems like this orbit is periodic. It's not really get. Oh, no, it, it, well, it seems to have satisfied the 75%, but it's not really deviating too much from our previous path as well as worried about. Well, as we continue to let it go, it'll scan more and more. But we fulfilled all three contracts, so that's pretty good. Let's analyze data again, and now we have some science to transmit back. Let's do that. And make sure it doesn't take too much juice. 
That multispectral sensor takes a lot more electric charge to transmit the data. Magnetometer data, 12.5. All right. So we have our science, and more importantly, we have a particular spot to aim for when it comes to Minmus. So we'll try and establish a, bit, a base there. All right, back to the Space Center. I decided to check if we got some better contracts after scanning Minmus. We do have a build a new surface outpost on Minmus, so that's ideal. We need a facility supporting five Kerbals, two scientists, antenna, so we actually have to send Kerbals along with this. Uh, built, uh, antenna docking port needs a docking port and can generate power but that's quite a lot of funds to do it and it's exactly what we want to do so let's do that. Collect science. Uh, they want some science data from the surface of Minmus and they're not picky about what kind of science. Let's do that. Exploration. Uh, no. Uh, want to plant a flag on the moon? That's pretty easy. Uh, hold on, but I've only got room for a total of seven contracts. So, and right now we've got seven? No, eight? What? No, no, that's available. Uh, oh, we've only got four. Okay, well then, uh, flag planting. Yes, we can do that. Now, I don't care about the part testing. Rescue and recovery, those are just parts. Well, uh, this part is in orbit around Minmus, but still. That's uh, uh, that's not what we're trying to do here. Satellite into Keo stationary network around Kerbin. It's tempting, but we're all right on our comm stuff, I believe. Okay, so that uh, that's good enough. Got five contracts, and uh, aside from the plan to flag one, and the or well, we've got to build an orbital station around Kerbin build a new orbital station around the moon which is really adding a new module to our moon station as far as I'm concerned plant a flag on the moon oh let's just do that now and surface outpost on Minmus from which we will get some science okay I was late in actually um, starting the recording but if I had started recording at a good time you would have actually seen this bounce up and collapse back down again so that's worrisome. That's not the first time that this has happened when I came to the moon. And it happened with uh, that vehicle right there. But in both cases they survived fine without anything blowing up. But it does suggest that I don't want to build anything too complicated. Or bouncy. I hope the bounciness doesn't increase over time. Anyway, we have enough electric charge. So that's positive. And I want to uh, transfer Jeb into this hab and then use the crew hatch. So, um, so many little things here. Transfer crew. Transfer to the hab. Okay. Unfortunately, our electric charge generation is not enough to actually run the habs. For instance, start hab quarters. That will drain the electric charge too quickly. That's why we need the other sources of electric charge. Now, of course we've got the power unit there which would work if it had some way of transmitting that power over here. And at the very least we would need to send some pipe endpoints for that to happen. Okay so well there's a rock there and there's their other vehicle that brought them here. Let's uh, put the flag near a rock. It's not really a rock, it's not collidable. Let's just check that that is true. Yeah, okay, okay. Back out, back out. Right. Okay, right here. Plant flag. Oh, I guess you could do some moon science while you're at it. I don't know if they've actually taken a surface sample here. Okay. Uh, moon base alpha. Mission fulfilled. Not really, they've got a lot more to do. But anyway, uh, take surface sample. Uh, keep, obviously. 
and EV report keep yeah I haven't done any of that here inventory nope no little uh, connect reports so back into the base I swear we've got another one of these modules in orbit and we just haven't landed it yet let me try and find that uh, cannot be stored no I, I want to be able to store it uh, okay why can't they be stored in that? Is there any way to get into our core hab? Do we have to go all the way to our uh, ship in order to store the experiments? Well, there's a door up there. Hopefully we can transmit stuff from that crew hatch. Okay, up. Forward. Okay, grab. Board. Okay, good. Here we can transmit information. Review data. Transmit data. Oh, no. Okay, well, keep experiment. We'll have to transfer it to some other module, which, well, we really need to slap on some comm device to this. But alright. Okay, so yeah, let me uh, look for our other module in orbit. Just so uh, we have more to do. All right. Yep, there it is. With the inflatable modules as well. What what type is this? This is a Kerbatat. That could be helpful. We could we could use a Kerbatat, I think, but probably doesn't have any comm devices either. But it does have some solar panels. But once again, not enough to actually produce enough power for the modules it has. And of course, we will have to send over some more material kits to actually inflate these modules. So lots to do. Let's see in the next episode what I actually remember to do. There's a lot to take care of here. But in any case, it should be fun. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.